Hi everyone, um, hopefully you can hear me. I'm not going to use the slides, I'm just going to introduce my colleague. Um, my name is Murray Cook, I'm both Stirling Council's archaeologist and co-director of Rampart Scotland. Um, really, this paper is about the last two and a half years of Stirling. It explores how a planning service uh, went from a fixed term part-time position, i.e. me, with no track record of community engagement, not even the ability to do risk assessments. And we went from that to having secured over £160,000 worth of funding. Uh, we've involved up to 150 events, we've involved over 6,000 people the last two and a half years, and we've secured funding for a community archaeology position, my colleague Fiona, who will take over. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't worry, it's really great to um, Yes, hello. Um, if I've learned anything from Murray, it's shame with self promotion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I, I'm Fiona Watson, I'm a CBA placement. Um, I'm with the Royal Council for 12 months, I've got about 6 months left. And um, having a really good time. Yeah, so, this will take us through some of the issues of working with archaeology within a council setting um, and how we've tried to overcome them. In practice, how we've tried to pick at these, then a brief case study, and then some wider outcomes, um, and the obligatory roadmap to try and show you how you can emulate us. Um, <laughs> here we are. Uh, just in case you don't know, because you might not, Stirling, in the centre of Scotland, um, we've got seven wards that we work in uh, Bannockburn, the Castle, uh, Dublin, and Bridge of Valley, the Fourth and Hendrick, Stirling East, Stirling West, Trossets, and Teeth, but we don't actually work in a lot of them. Trossett's Park area. Um, and what do we mean by community? I'm not going to go too in depth in this because we could be here having a whole session about just what do we mean by community. But for us as members of the council, it's basically anyone who's inhabiting the Stirling area, the Stirling taxpayers. Um, but importantly, you don't actually need to be from Stirling to take part. We will um, take anyone from out with our borders as well, um, should you be interested. So, what's the setup? Um, the Scottish Government, obviously there's a vast number of staff there, um, Stirling Council, 91,000 people, you know, over 91,000 people in the population. Um, we have, uh, where we are within archaeology, we've got the environment, that's got multiple sections beneath that label, and um, the two that focus most on archaeology are planning and land services. So we've got this really large population, but um, we only had really 0.6 of an archaeologist um, working there uh, <laughs> and on a part-time contract as well. Um, Murray was able to get uh, a CBA placement in myself, which means there's somebody else there uh, for another 12 months, um, 6 months now. Um, so there's about 1.6 archaeologists for that many people to try and provide um, community archaeology um, as a service. So, uh, problems in theory. The council set up in such a way that archaeology is really only viewed as um, a tool for advice. Um, as Murray was saying, the planning department um, it can't write its own risk assessments or anything, and this, much of this is embedded in how it's viewed. Um, there's really little knowledge within the wider council um, of what the subject really encompasses and how, how broad it actually is. Um, again, planning advice, not actions. Um, and there's no real appreciation of the potential value for the community. Um, and again, out with the obvious, such as the castle um, and things like the Wallace Monument, uh, the council doesn't really consider some of the other monuments in the area. It's the low-hanging fruit that they go for. Um, and again, lots of people we found are really interested in wanting to participate in a community archaeology project, but um, there seems to be a few people who either can or want to, to take on that responsibility and organise it. Um, you know, obviously people have got their jobs five days a week, they can maybe only help out on a weekend, and um, they've got lots of other things that they need to be doing, but our job as archaeologists, well, you know, that, that's what we do all the time, so it's really up to us to try and provide that service for people and that opportunity to get involved, should they wish to do so. Um, oh, 
Have I pressed the square button? No, and that time I didn't press it. There you go. Ah, yes, and the infamous style effect. The council uh, has lots of different departments, and each department has their own budget, um, and it's sort of frowned upon for one department to put money into something else. Um, I've just noticed this in, through working with the ranger service where I'm based, um, and you know, trying to get resources from somewhere else. Obviously, that department has to account for that. They have to see where they're going and why, and how much money is spent on it. And if they seem to be giving away money to something that they're not really um, in charge of, that's obviously going to come down um, heavily on the people who made the decision to help you out. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it can be tough trying to get people to work together when they all have their own agendas and they've all got their own tasks that they need to get done. And um, so all of this, ah, yes. Um, this all leads to problems in, in practice, all these different outlooks and setups. And um, there's no budget for archaeology beyond advice. There was only a fixed term archaeologist um, until Murray managed to to convince them to let them stay. Um, there is no risk assessments, there's no insurance, there's no storage when you actually find something, um, there's no equipment, we don't get any publicity, um, and there is no time actually factored in for community archaeology itself. Yes, oh the horror is probably what you're thinking, much like me when I first learned about all of this, um, but there are ways to try and get around it. Um, these are some of the ways you've been trying to counteract these problems. Um, fixed term to permanent archaeologist, Murray here. Um, also, Murray started to conduct an audit of resources when he got into the position. So you've got to try and look at how you can maybe fit into existing pro um, projects. Um, trying to seek internal partnerships. For example, although Murray is providing a lot of my mentoring and support for the placement, I'm actually based in land services because land services can actually go out, we've got the tools and the resources to do so, they can write risk assessments. Um, external partnerships as well, such as uh, we've approached local museums, there's contractors from universities, schools, HLF partnerships, they can sometimes help you out and you can pull together resources from lots of different places to get what you need for your project to run. Um, again, funding, pulling in favours from people you know, um, and most importantly, you've got to try and show your worth. Um, so whether that's you know volunteer numbers or trying to get some publicity of your own out there, you've got to show how you've made a difference and how people are actually interested and and, and wanting to take part. Um, no. One of the case studies is Doors Open Day, and this is really how it all started off a couple of years ago. And this was an existing project in the planning department, and I'm sure you've all heard of it. You can go along to places you don't normally get access to, and you can have a good snoop about. Um, basically, it had everything in place that it needed. It had all its own insurance, and it um, had all its publicity running. Um, so, Murray expanded the scope. Um, and made it into almost like a, a, new, a new project. It actually ran alongside um, Scottish Archaeology Month as well, so it fitted in really well with that. This is Abbey Creek, this is a community dig that was able um, to go ahead as part of this, and this is really the sort of the, the beginning of it. And it's had lots of uh, effects um, which have led on to more community projects after proving the success of this one. Um, and these are some of the wider outcomes that we've had. Um, so for the community, we've had over 6,000 people attending free events, and these are ranging from all different time periods as well. Um, 150 events in a varying scale. There's the CPA placement myself, which has provided an ex basically an extra archaeologist to help with this. Um, and we've been uh, getting funding from lots of other projects, and most importantly as well, we've been having fun. Um, research, Abbey Creek, the hill fort's been dated now, also Mott Hill, confirmation of the route of the Roman road, um, and finding an external bank at Torment Rock, and um, recovering material um, for carbon dating. So there are actually a lot of you know real contributions to research that have been coming out of this, as well as people getting a chance to go and have um, some you know some real fun with archaeology and learn something about the subject as well. 
Um, and all this has sort of fed back into itself um, and the success is leading on to greater funding opportunities. Um, so you can see some of them there and some of the new projects that are going to be coming up and continuing. There we go. So, the route map at the end, this <laughs> might hurt your eyes slightly, <laughs> but it's basically trying to break it all down just to show you the routes that we've been going through and that you can maybe do as well if you're in a similar situation. It doesn't necessarily need to be a council. Um, so, it's always best to start with an audit and see what your resources are um, and you know see who's doing what already, because there's no point doubling up your work. Um, once you've done that, you can maybe branch out, talk to other local community members that are interested, start history societies, museums, potential partners. Um, and in the meantime, there's always things that you yourself, even as an individual, can do on a very small scale that reaches a lot of people. Um, we've had lots of uh, walks and lectures, small scale days that have been very popular and reached out to lots of people um, without having to go out for massive amounts of funding. Um, the only problem with this is you have to be prepared to put in a lot of your own personal time. Um, and finally, you can lead on from these um, and that can give you evidence for going in for larger scale bids um, and bigger projects with bigger partners. Um, so that is everything, really, from our little window into how we've been working at Sterling. Um, and just thanks to some of the sponsors um, for the talk. So that's it. <laughs>